Hello and welcome to my 10th video lesson in using Blender 2.6. Today is going to be a quick video. I'm going to be talking about adding 3D text into your 3D animations, into your 3D scene. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and press delete or X to get rid of my cube. And I'm going to go ahead and add a text object. So I'm going to go either to the add menu uh, and add text or I can press shift A with my mouse in the 3D viewport. Uh, shift A, and then I can add text that way. When you add text, it is a flat object, and it's by default facing um, up, so towards the z-axis. Um, so I'm going to press 7 to look at my scene from the top view, and if you're in perspective view, in other words, things get farther away, or as, as things get farther away, they get smaller, you can press 5, and that'll switch it to orthographic view. So I'll press 7, uh, so I'm at top in, or in top orthographic view. And by default, the text uh, says text, funny enough. So I'm going to press um, tab. And we normally think of tab um, as going into edit mode, which would be to edit the um, edges, faces, and vertices of objects. Well, in, with a text object, it's not quite the same as a mesh. Um, to edit the text, we want to go into edit mode, but we can edit those vertices, faces, and edges. We're just typing into text. So we get a cursor, so we can press delete, delete, delete. And I'm going to type in um, CG Borman, which is my YouTube username. And then uh, to kind of finish that text, I'm going to go out of edit mode again. So I'm going to press tab. And there's that 3D text. But it's not 3D yet. Um, it's only 2D. And to make it 3D, we have to go over to the, the properties window. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider so we can actually see all the tabs. This property window um, is uh, context, context sensitive, um, which means that if we have different things selected, we'll have different tabs uh, in the window available. If I have the camera selected, you'll notice that the, the number of tabs changes. Um, and it's actually a camera tab because we have the camera selected. And this has options for the camera. Uh, same thing with the light. The number of tabs changed, or actually it was the same, but we have an, a light tab. And this can change the, um, the type of lamp that it is. So it can be either a, su a, a point lamp, so a single spot, like a, like a very small light bulb. Or we can make it act more like the sun, or a spotlight, um, or other kinds of lamps. But I'm going to select the text object. And it's not a, a normal mesh, and it's not a camera or lamp. So it has a text tab. And if I go down to the geometry area, um, we can actually um, change how 3D it is. So right now it's only 2D. I'm going to click on the little arrow on the right of the extrude area, and you'll see that it, well, it just kind of barely made it a little bit tall, so it gave it some depth. I'll keep going, and you can see that the more I extrude it, uh, or change the extrude value, it's getting more 3D. Now you can click and drag uh, in this, left and right, and that'll make it uh, less or more, but I find that it's way too sensitive. So I find that just kind of clicking on the arrows, although it's slow and cumbersome, that's kind of the way to go. Or you can type in a value. Uh, so I might type 1, and that'll make it <laughs> really big. Um, so I'm going to type in maybe 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.15. Now, um, you could be happy with that, but there are a few more options. I'm going to wait for my computer to catch up to me. There we go. Um, now, it has very hard edges on it, so the sides of the, uh, of the letters, the extruded sides, just kind of meet and have a very hard edge with the uh, face of the letter. So I'm going to change that by changing the amount of bevel. I can again click on that bevel, and you'll see that it starts to bevel the edges. It starts to make a diagonal um, kind of uh, smoothing between the, the face of the letter and the extruded sides. So I can keep going. If you go too far, it depends on your font. Um, by default, the font is uh, just the bl default Blender font. Um, so that's how you can bevel uh, both the back and the front. Now, if I want to make it smooth, I can do that too. Um, I believe that's the resolution, so I can turn up the resolution, and as you can see, just the resolution of 2 kind of helps it out a little bit, or a resolution of 1 rather, 2 makes it even better, and the higher you go, of course that'll slow down your computer and slow down rendering, um, but that's that. 
and the higher we go, the higher resolution. In other words, um, it's getting more and more vertices and smoothing it out more and ma making more detail in your mesh. Um, what is depth then? Depth kind of makes the um, the letters thicker, more bold. There is a problem with that though, and, and you'll see it right here. The font is really stored in what's called a vector. Um, well, it, it's, it's a vector font. Uh, in other words, all the letters are actually just paths. They're just kind of a, like wire letters. That's how most fonts are stored. Uh, so they're wires, really. And by default, they have a, a width on either side of that wire. So you can think of an O as a really kind of thin hula hoop. Um, and so the amount of depth means the amount on either side of that wire hoop. Uh, but if you turn the, it up too much, you'll get some weird artifacts and some things sticking out. Like on this M now, because I turned the depth up too high, it kind of started to extrude more than we wanted to. So I can turn it back down again. And that depends on your font and how much you turn up depth. So right about there, it's probably good. So I don't want to go up too high. We can also change our font. So I'm going to go and select under my font area, again under the uh, text tab in the properties window. Um, this requires you to know where your fonts are on your computer. If you're using Windows like I am, um, you can click this little folder icon. And the, on Windows, the fonts are in the Windows uh, folder on your C drive, most likely. Um, you'll know that on your C drive, on your Windows computer, there is a Windows folder which actually stores your operating system. And it's normally pretty dangerous to go in there. Um, don't ever change anything in this folder um, without knowing exactly what you're doing. But inside this Windows folder, so C Windows, there is a fonts folder. And this contains all of the uh, font files that all of the programs on your computer will use for the most part. Most of these fonts are end with a .ttf, which stands for true text font or true, true text file, I'm not sure. Uh, and these are all the fonts. Now, they're, they're not always named uh, very well, though normally they'll give you an idea of what the, the font name is, and if it's a bold version or if it's an italic version. Um, and there's a lot here, and you can select most of them, and most of them will work. Um, I've never tried a .otf file, um, but that's uh, by Adobe, I would suppose. So I'm going to select, um, if I want a different font, let's see. Uh, these are all the Arial fonts. Arial, Arial, excuse me, is a very common font. It's one of the ones that's on pretty much every computer. Um, and there's Arial N, Arial NB, Arial MBI, Arial NI, Arial UNI. Um, and those are all just different versions of Arial. Of course, there's Arial BI as well, and Arial BD, which I would suppose would be bold. And Arial, um, just Arial.ttf. So I'm going to select maybe Arial bold and press open font. And so my text actually changed to that font. Let's find something a little bit, bit more different. Um, let's select a font that has serifs on it. So I'm going to select, I maybe I'll press T-I-M. No, it's not going to let me search that way. I'm going to find Times New Roman, because that used to be the, the default standard in, in Microsoft Office. And my computer just kind of delayed on me there. Oh, there we go. OK, that's not what I wanted. Uh, open the folder. And I can scroll to go this way. Good. Um, let's quickly find it. Uh, well, let's see if Wingdings works. Open font. Aha, Wingsting, Wingdings does work. So you can see that you can change the font uh, and change the amount of uh, thickness on it. So I can go back up and change my depth. Of course, that'll start to mess things up if it wants to do that. Um, and as soon as I've opened a font, I can always go back to it. So there's a little shortcut to all the ones I've applied. So Arial Bold MT B font, which was the default, Century School Book uh, Bold, I guess, and Wingdings 2 are the ones I've, I've tried so far. Uh, so you can always switch back to ones that you thought were a maybe. I might change, try Tunga and see what that is. So oh, that's kind of a plain and ordinary font. I want to see one that has... Um, I really do want to find Times. There we go. Times, an open font. Times is a serif font. And if you don't know what serif fonts are, serifs are these little things that stick off the end and the top and the different ends of all the letters. Those are called serifs. Um, an Arial is a sans serif font, which means it does not have those things. But the Times um, font family 
does have serif, so those little extra tags at the end of all the kind of stick-like letters. All right, I hope that gave you an idea of how to add text to your 3D scene. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks a lot.